History of Taxation in the Philippines Taxation is a term for when a taxing authority, usually a government, levies or imposes a financial obligation on its citizens or residents. Paying taxes to governments or officials has been a mainstay of civilization since ancient times. Pre-colonial period Government were called barangays, no national government. There was no dato strong enough to unite the archipelago into one nation. It was headed by a ruler called Jatu or Raha. The collected tax or tribute was called Buis or Handug. Non-payment of taxes was already punishable during this period. During this time, the country had various kingdoms called barangays, which was ruled by Datus or Rahas, who offered protection to all its subordinates. Since barter was leading from the trade back, then tax or buis came in forms of crops or goods, which the people living under the Datu share a portion of their harvest or property in exchange for security and protection. Three classes. Tumau class includes Datu ready nobility or pure royal descent. Timbawa class, warrior class or third rank, or nobility and freemen leader, chiefs, or nor slaves. Only the Timbawa pay taxes since Maharlikas and the Datu offer the protection. Orifun class, commoners and slaves. The Alipin did not likely make any money for their services and hence did not pay tax. Orifun or Slaves could not offer anything since they lived to serve. Thus, the highest and the lowest of the castes were exempted from tax payment. Spanish period, 1521-1898 Bandala, system implemented by Spanish authority in the Philippines that required native Filipino farmers to sell their goods to the government. Also collected were the mandala a round stock of rice stock to be trash, an annual enforced sale, requesting of wood as a rice. During these times of Spanish period, taxes that were collected from the inhabitants varied from tribute or head tax of one gold maize, annually tax on the value of jewelry and gold trinkets, indirect taxes on tobacco, wine, cockpits, burlas, and powder. Encomendia System, 1570 a compliance with the decree issued by King Philip II in 1558 distributed lands in Cebu to royal Spaniards' subjects. The Economendia was not only actually a land grant but was a favor from the kind under which the Spaniards receiving his favor was given the right to collect tributes or taxes from the inhabitants of the area assigned to him, the man who received this favor called Encomendero. Tribute buis, which could be paid in cash or kind, was initially fixed at 8 reals and later increased to 15 reals. Listed below is a sample of a Filipino tax during the Spanish occupation. Tribute to a Galamindia tax, 10 reals. This month's predials government tax, 1 real. Commission in internal revenue, 1 real. Sanctorum, 3 reals. In 1884, the tribute was replaced by the cedula personnel, wherein colonists were required to pay personal identification. Everyone over the age of 18 was obligated to pay. Yung mga nagtataon na sa mga 18 years old ay obligasyon na nilang magbayad ng buwis. American Period January 1, 1940, the cedula was imposed by the Americans when the Commonwealth Act No. 465 went into effect, mandating the imposition of base, resident tax or 50 centavos, and an additional tax of 1 peso based on factors such as income and real estate holdings. The payment of this tax would merit the issue of resident Certificate corporation were subject to the resident tax. However, persons who are in 
legibly to pay the resident tax may be issued a certificate for 20 centavos. 1973 significant amendments were put into effect following the enactment of the local tax code. 1991 local tax were later sub subsumed into the local government code. In 1992, the first civil government was established under William H. Taft. However, it was only during the term of civil, civil governor Luke E. Wright that the Bureau of the Internal Revenue was created through the passage of the Re Reorganization Act. In July 4, 1946, when the Philippines gained its independence from the United States, the Bureau was eventually re-established separately. October 1, 1947, this led to a reorganization by a virtue of executive order number 94 wherein the following were undertaken the accounting unit and the revenue account and statistical division were merged into one all records in the record section under the administrative division were consolidated three all legal work were centralized in the law division Post-war era January 1, 1951, second major reorganization of the Bureau took place only through the passage of Executive Order Number 392. Three new departments were created. Number one is the legal, number two is the assessment, and number three is collection. March 1, 1954, the third major organization of the Bureau took effect through the Revenue Memorandum Order. This led to the creation of the following offices. Specific Tax Division, Ligation Section, Processing Section, Office of the City Revenue Examiner. January 1957, the position title of the head of the Bureau was changed from the collector to commissioner. 1964, the Philippines was divided in a new, into 15 regions and 17 inspection of districts. The Tobacco Inspection Board and Accountable Forms Committee were also created directly under the office of the commissioner. Marcos Administration in 1976, under Commissioner Efren Plana's administration, the Bureau's National Office transferred from the Finance Building in Manila to its own 12-story building in Quezon City, inaugurated on June 3, 1977. It was also in the same year that President Marcos promulgated the National Internal Revenue Code of 1977 which updated the 1934 tax code. On August 1, 1980, the Bureau was further reorganized under the administration of Commissioner Ruben Ancheta. New offices were created and some organizational units were relocated for the purpose of making the Bureau more responsive to the needs of the tax-paying public. Corazon Aquino Administration After the People's Revo Revolutionary in February 1986, a new, a renewed trust towards an effective tax administration was pursued by the Bureau. And also Operation Walang Lagay was launched to promote the efficient and home taxes. On January 30, 1987, the Bureau was reorganized under the administration of Commissioner Bienven Bienvenido Tan Jr., pursuant to Executive Order Number 127 under the said EO. Two major functional groups headed and per supervised by a Deputy Commissioner were created, and these were Number one is the assessment and collection group and 
the Legal and Internal Administration Group. With the advent of the value-added tax in 1988, a massive campaign program aimed to promote and encourage compliance with the requirements of the VAT launched. The adaptation of the VAT system was one of the structural reform provided for in the 1986 tax reform program, which was designed to simplify tax administration and make the tax system more equitable. It was also in 1988 that the Revenue Information System Services was abolished and transferred back to the BIR by virtue of a memorandum order from the Office of the President dated May 24, 1988. This transfer had implication on the de delivery of the computerization requirements of the Bureau in relation to its function of tax assessment and collection. Ramos Administration the year 1993 marked the entry into the Bureau of its First Lady Commissioner, Liwaiwai Vincent Chato. In order to attain the Bureau's vision of transformation, a compre comprehensive and integrated program known as the ACT or Action Centered Transformation Program was undertaken to realign and direct the entire organization towards the fulfillment of its vision and mission. It was during Commissioner Chato's term that a five-year tax computerization project was undertaken in 1994. This evolved the establishment of a modern and computerized integrated tax system and internal administration system. Further Streamlining of the BIR was approved on July 1997 through the passage of EO number 430. In order to support the implementation of the computer computerization integrated tax system, highlights of the said EO includes the creation of a fourth revenue group in the BIR, which is the legal and enforcement group headed by the Deputy Commissioner, and also the creation of the Internal Affairs Service, Taxpayers Assistance Service, Information Planning and Quality Service, and the Revenue Data Centers. Estrada as an Administration With the advent of President Estrada's administration, a Deputy Commissioner of the BIR, Beethoven Rualo was appointed as Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Under his leadership, priority reforms measures were undertaken to enhance voluntary compliance and improve the Bureau's productivity. One of the most significant reform measures was the implementation of Economic Recovery Assistant Payment Program, which granted immunity from adult and investigation to taxpayers who have paid 20% more than the tax paid in 1997 for income tax. In order to encourage and educate consumers or taxpayers to demand sales, invoices, and receipts, the raffle, raffle promo Huminginang Recibo Manalo ng Libo Libo was in institutionalized in 1999. The large taxpayers' monitoring system was also established under the Commissioner Rualo's administration to closely monitor the tax compliance of the country's large taxpayers. Memorandum of agreement were also forged with the League of Local Government Units and several private sectors and professional organizations to help the BIR implement tax campaign initiatives. On September 1, 2000, the Large Taxpayer Service and the Excise Taxpayer Service were established under EO number 175 
to reinforce the tax administration and enforcement capabilities of the BIR. Shortly after the establishment of said revenue services, a new organizational structure were approved on October 31, 2001, under EO number 306, which resulted in the in integration of the functions of the ETS and the LTS. In line with the passage of the Electronic Commerce Act of 2000 on June 14, the Bureau implemented a full integrated tax system, rollout acceleration program to facilitate the full utilization of tax computerization in the Bureau's operations. Under the program, seven ITS back-end system were released in stages in RR8 Makati City and the large taxpayer services. Arroyo Administration in 2001 to 2010. Following the momentous events of EDSA 2 in January 2001, newly installed President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo appointed a former Deputy Commissioner. Attorney Rene G. Banyas as the new Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Under Commissioner Banyas' administration, the BIR's trust was to transform an agent, agency to make it taxpayer-focused. It was undertaken through the implementation of change initiatives that were directed to Number 1 is the reform Reform the tax system to make it simpler and suit the Philippine culture. Second is to re-engineer the tax process to make them simpler and more efficient and transparent. Also restructure the BIR to give it financial and administra administrative flexibility and re redesign the human resources policy system and procedures to transform the workforce to be more responsive to taxpayers' needs. With the resignation of Commissioner Banias on August 19, 2002, finance under Secretary Cornelio C. Chison was designed as interim BIR Commissioner. Eight days later, on August 20, 27, 2000, former Costumes Commissioner Guillermo L. Paraino Jr. was appointed as the new Commissioner of Internal Revenue. The conduct of special operations on high-profile tax evaders, which resulted to the filing of tax cases under the run-after tax evaders, Program marked Commissioner Paraya's administration as well as the conduct of the tax compliance verification drives and accreditation, accreditation and registration of cash, register machines and a point of scale machines to approve taxpayer services. The Bureau also established a BIR contact center in the National Office and Elenges in National. On October 28, 2006, Deputy Commissioner for Legal and Inspection Group Jose Mario C. Bunyag was appointed as full-fledged fledged commission, commissioners of internal revenue. Under his administration, the Bureau attained success in a number of key undertakings which included the expansion of the rate program to the regional offices, inclusion of new, new payment gateways such as the efficient service machines and the GCash and smart money facilities, implementation of the bank bench marketing method and installation of Bureau's e-compliant system a new service that allows taxpayers to log their compliance against airing revenuers through the BIR website. In 2007, the National Program Support for Tax Administration 
reform program funded by various international developmental program agencies was launched to improve the BIR efficiency in various, various areas of administration. On June 29, 2007, Commissioner Bunyag relinquished the top post of the BIR and was replaced by Deputy Commissioner for Operations Group Lillian B. Hefty, making her the second Lady Commissioner of the BIR. Commissioner Hefty focused on the strengthening of the use of business intelligence by embarking on the data matching of income payments of withholding agents against the reported income of the concerned recipients. Information sharing between the BIR and the local government units was also intensified through the LGU Revenue Assurance System which aims to uncover fraud and non-payment of taxes. With the resignation of Commissioner Hefty in October 2008, former BIR Deputy Commissioner for Legal and Enforcement Group Sixto S. Esquivias IV was appointed as the new Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Commissioner Esquivia's administration was marked with the conduct of nationwide closure of airing business establishments under the Oplan Candado program. A taxpayer feedback machine mechanism was also established under his term where compliance on airing BIR employees and taxpayers who do not pay taxes and do not issue invoices can be reported. When Commissioner Esquivias resigned in November 2009, Senior Deputy Commissioner Joel L. Tan Torres assumed the position of Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Under his administration, Commissioner Tan Torres pursued a high visibility public awareness campaign on the Bureau's enforcement and taxpayers' service programs. Noy Aquino administration following the held acclaimed inauguration of President Benigno C. Aquino on June 30, 2010, a former BIR Deputy Commissioner, Attorney Kim S. Jacinto Revenue, during her first few months in the BIR Commissioner General's focus on the filing of the tax evasion cases under the rate program in compliance with the SONA pronouncement of President Aquino. Duterte Administration on December 19, 2017, President Rodrigo Duterte signed a tax reform of accel acceleration and inclusion training law wherein it exempt all the taxpayers whose annual income is less than or equal to, to 50,000 pesos to pay their taxes. As the compensation, petroleum products and consumers, goods with either natural, artificial, or high fructose syrup sweeteners will get an increase in its prices with natural fruit juices and milk being exempted from the from this increased